Um, good morning, everybody. As our friend said, my name is Ibrahim Amiri. Um, well, uh, let's break the ice first. I, I mean, everybody, whoever comes here on the stage might feel that uh, nervousness a little bit, but just uh, pardon me for that part. Uh, I want to begin with my uh, story from my childhood, and I hope that my story will not bore you guys here. Uh, as children, we are all, you know, we all have been inspired by something, we all dream about something, and the case was similar for me. Uh, it was a very dark night, and the sky was dark, and the stars were shining in the night sky. I was uh, laying on, on, on our rooftop in a refugee camp in Peshawar, where I was born as a refugee kid. In 1996, I was uh, already seven years old, and um, so we always uh, used to sleep on the rooftop, and my mother uh, used to tell us stories about like fairy tales and legendary stories, and I used to look at the night sky and go deep, you know, in this uh, story and try to imagine what she was uh, telling us. Uh, one night in 1996, I saw something very strange in the night sky, which changed my life eternally. I was uh, struck by the, this beautiful uh, site of the comet uh, Hale-Bopp, which was recently discovered that year. Apparently, back then, I didn't know what that object was, but it was very beautiful and strange. It was a bright star with, a, with two tails, and it was in the night sky for two consecutive years. So uh, I asked my mother. Apparently, I didn't have any other resources. I had to go back to my mother and ask her. I asked her what that object is, and she... Uh, with a lack of knowledge about astronomy, apparently told me a rather uh, uh, a legendary story. Well, she said it's a queen star that appear, appears uh, once in a while, and whoever sees it uh, will uh, uh, will get a lot of fortune in the future or will have a good luck. And that thing happened to me. I fell in love with the stars and with the universe and all the beautiful things that exist within the universe. Well, I continued and years passed by and apparently not much happened in my life during that mo those years until I was again uh, faced with something uh, that changed my life and then from that, from that moment I continued and uh, the, walking this journey and I'm still walking that journey. It was in 2003 when we recently moved from Peshawar to Afghanistan, to Kabul. And I was watching the National Geographic channel on TV, and the first uh, Martian robot, or the, it's called the Spirit Mars rover by NASA, it was sent to Mars, and the very first uh, images from Martian surface arrived to Earth, and they broadcasted it on National Geographic. And the idea of looking at the Martian surface I looked at the similarities between our planet and the Mars. I was so fascinated by uh, thinking that, okay, you're traveling from one planet into dark space, nothing in between, and you s travel for seven months in empty space with, the, with, with rocket speed, which is apparent, apparently uh, 40 times faster than a bullet. You're sitting on top of this tiny rocket, and then you're traveling in empty space for seven months, and then all of a sudden, you look back at your home. Well, there. <laughs> I thought we don't have a projector. This was, well, this is by curiosity. It was taken later on. But the image that I saw was pretty similar to so something that you see here. Um, I thought with myself, how is this even possible? You're leaving your home. And your home planet becomes like a little tiny dot in your, like behind you or in your sky. And after traveling that long, you're arriving on another uh, heavenly body, which just looks pretty similar to our own home. It has mountains, deserts, valleys, the atmosphere, the wind, and above all, the sun in its sky. It was all like home. 
So it opened up a whole new thing in my, in my mind. I started to realize that the earth is not the only world. There are worlds beyond earth. There are sunsets and sunrises on those worlds, and there might be life on those worlds. That's something that needs to be discovered by the future generations. We don't have any clue of, of that. So this was the moment in my life where I started thinking, and I, I became sure that astronomy and space science is what I want to do and pursue a career in the field. So uh, I, I was sure that I want to become a NASA astronaut. Now apparently uh, for a child who has recently traveled from a, from a different country as, a, as an immigrant and traveled to a country where it's, it's war-torn, there's no hope, there are no chances of becoming an astronaut or not even an astronomer. An astronaut is, is very, very difficult. But I still stick to the dream of becoming an astronaut. I found NASA's phone number and I kept calling them every day. Just, just give, giving myself the hope that I would become an astronaut. And so I kept asking them, what is the requirement for becoming an astronaut? And they, well, he said, well, you have to go and get a degree in a science field. And then if you're a pilot, that's a plus point. And you have to be a US citizen. That was the part that I didn't like. I did science, I did my degree in f physics and mathematics. I, uh, well, with the least possibilities available in my country, I, I did uh, paragliding, I jumped from mountains, I did everything just to have some experience in the aviation. But, you know, there were challenges and hopelessness, but I didn't give up. I was only in 10th grade. Uh, and back then, there was not a lot of electricity. I mean, it wasn't available in all corners of Kabul. And Kabul city was much darker. Every night, I used to look at the Milky Way from my own rooftop. It was visible. Now you can't see it. You just can count a few stars in the night sky. I looked around in the optic shops to find a telescope. Uh, it wasn't available. And apparent, apparently, we didn't have it in our school laboratories. So I decided, okay, if, if it's not available, let's make one. You can make it. And I went to like this shop, this optic and, and, and glass shop, and found some glasses, lenses, and I fixed them together in a stove pipe, and it worked. Believe me, it worked. I looked at the moon for the first time through my own homemade telescope. And I was only at the 10th grade. I was... Uh, 16 years old. I mean, it was not a rocket science, but for a person who is an aspiring astronomer or an aspiring astronaut, it was a big deal. That night, I couldn't put that object down. I kept looking at the moon and uh, the craters and the mountains and, well, tiny features were visible through that, you know, low-quality telescope that I made. And that was enough for me. My mom used to call me a night owl because every night till the morning I was awake and counting stars. And from there, uh, I took a Concours exam and I was uh, admitted to Kabul University Science Faculty and it was my first choice and I got there. And I wanted to do a degree in physics. And on the second year after MPCB, when I wanted to, uh, well, when everybody goes to their own departments, everybody had three choices to select. And I chose three. I, my three choices were physics, physics, and physics. Because I had a passion and love for physics. And I knew that it's a, it's a stepping stone. It's a platform for me to give my higher education later on in astronomy or uh, aerospace engineering. And then upon my graduation from Kabul University, I joined the Afghanistan Astronomy Association, which was founded by Yunus Bakhshi, who's not currently living in the country. And as volunteers, uh, we loved to do certain things. Our first love was apparently loving the night sky and the, the beauty of it. But the second thing we loved was sharing our knowledge with others. The little bit that we knew, we wanted to share it, especially with the kids because they need it the most. And they're the ones that need to be inspired by, by things like 
other planets or life on other planets or the universe and the beauty of it. So we did that. And slowly I became passionate about more things like astrophotography. I took some classes and I've taken some pictures that I might show here later on from the deep space, uh, from the Kabul sky. <sighs> and, <clears throat> well, uh, the, it's, it's, a, it's a bit bright here, so you can't see the, the, the stars and the telescope probably, but it's in Bamiyan. Uh, through the Astronomy Association, we visited dozens of schools, even I can say hundreds of schools, in Kabul and other provinces. Voluntarily, we all did volunteer work, activity. Uh, we visited schools and we uh, talked to children, we talked to their, stu their, their teachers, and uh, we just uh, felt the, this, uh, I mean, now I'm, uh, beside dreaming of becoming an astronaut, I started to realize that there are other responsibilities that uh, directs to me, and I, I'm responsible for that, which is, uh, I found that in our schools, Astronomy is not considered uh, a serious scientific subject. Uh, when I was a student, I didn't, took, I didn't take classes of astronomy, and it's the same for others. Not even in Kabul University, trust me. E even on the university level, astronomy is not considered a serious subject. And that's why when you go out and ask anybody in, on the street or maybe in a community, maybe even inside... Um, <clears throat> an academic uh, environment, uh, there are still superstitious beliefs about uh, celestial phenomena. For instance, if there is a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, you hear people shouting and yelling, and it's a very prehistoric sort of a behavior from humans because our ancestors in the past used to do these behaviors. They had these behaviors. They were scared of, of uh, solar and, and, and lunar eclipses, but Today, in the 21st century, when like science and technology has all these advances and, and, and you know uh, development, why are our Afghans still the victim of those sort of behaviors? So uh, this is a superstitious uh, a superstition that we want to combat through uh, Afghanistan astronomy. I would say AAA because it's Afghanistan astronomy. So, so I'll make it short for you guys. So AAA always wanted to fight and combat these sort of ideas. And now apparently for an old man whose thoughts are already established, it's very hard to change it with something new. But if you don't uh, come in as a barrier between the old generation and the new generation, they will, the ideas will keep uh, flowing into the minds of the young generation. And they will also, uh, you know, adopt those... Uh, those uh, fictions and legendary tales about, you know, oh, the meteor is like a sort of angel trying to fly to the sky. Or I, uh. Today, the, the science explains all these. It's, it's, it's done. It's, it's clear for us. So uh, these kind of superstitions are being fought by the activities and outreach activity of AAA. And we've been doing it since 2009. It's been a decade now. Uh, you might see some pictures of... Uh, I just thought that these pictures, out of like a, a million pictures and videos that we have from all the outreach activities, I think these are pretty inspirational and touching. Uh, the smile on the face of a religious school student, a madrasa in Jalalabad, uh, holding a book of astronomy with a picture of Neil Armstrong on its cover. I think it's something. And this kid, I love him for his beautiful teeth, <laughs> uh, is looking through our telescope to the moon. And this evening, uh, we invited Abdullahad Moman, the, uh, the first and uh, over so far the only Afghan cosmonaut. Uh, he was with us as a guest, and he also looked to the moon through our telescope. And this is another girl from Jalalabad. Uh, this is a picture of the moon that I, I've taken with the telescope. Um, as I said, I had a passion for astrophotography. And um, this is not with my homemade telescope, by the way. This is uh, with the 
sophisticated equipment that we have. Uh, through AAA, I uh, could uh, get uh, opportunities to do uh, bigger things. I was accepted to a program called CURIA. It stands for Consortium for Undergraduates Education and Research in Astronomy. It is based in the United States, in Los Angeles. There's a very historic observatory, astronomical observatory, called Mount Wilson Observatory. Uh, Albert Einstein, Edwin Hubble, and um, other prominent scientists used the telescopes in that observatory to measure the diameter of our universe and to come up with the theory of Big Bang, which is the only and so far the most accurate uh, explanation for how everything works in our universe. So I had the honor to visit that observatory and carry out a research project. I was studying the magnetic activities on the uh, uh, sun's surface uh, with its uh, sunspots. It's called uh, the Zeeman splitting. I don't, I don't want to go in deep into that part. Um, I did that research and it was successful. And I came back to Afghanistan and continued doing what I was doing here. And from, from there, uh, uh, we published uh, astronomy books, we, uh, magazines, and very recently, AAA was able to successfully create 50 astronomy clubs on the school surface, on, on the school level, in Kabul city, in the districts of Kabul, Uruzgan province, and Herat province, and two clubs in Kandahar. We were able to create these clubs, and when I say we, it's a team. We're currently we're 21 uh, members at AAA. We're all volunteers, and we all did it together. And so these clubs, we believe that uh, apparently with, our, with the donation of our friends from, from other astronomy communities in, in America and in Europe, we were able to uh, provide them with 100 telescopes, huge telescopes, the things that I didn't have when I was a student. I, I started dreaming that, okay, if I couldn't have it, the, the other generation should have it. So uh, we provided those telescopes to the schools, and we believe that these students will use the telescopes in their schools, and they will take it out to their communities and show the public about how amazing our place in this cosmos is. Just pictures <laughs> that I've taken. Uh, it's the Orion Nebula. Um, so, uh, at this stage in my life, I am a candidate for the Fulbright's uh, master's program. And next Thursday, I'm leaving to San Diego State University to begin my master's in astronomy in planetary science. And upon my return from the country, from the United States, I want to start job as a professor or assistant professor at Kabul University. And I want to teach astronomy uh, on an academic level. And the, the goals of AAA for the future, the vision is that we want to establish the first astronomical observatory, which was never built in the, in the history of our country. We never had like a, a facility that would uh, look up to the stars in the universe. And through this, we want to gather all Afghans, all our uh, friends uh, to come, with, with regardless of the fact of like what, what language we speak, what religion we carry, what sect we carry. We all have to come under one... Uh, uh, night sky because we all look to the same stars and the same moon and the same sun. So astronomy is important because it has a message of unity. It, the Astronomers Without Borders is an organization in the United States and their slogan is one sky, one people. 
And it's true. If you're black, if you're white, if you're Muslim, if you're Christian, we're all looking in the same sky. So this fact, you know, it brings us all together. And that's the kind of thing that we want to promote in our country. We want to unite all Afghans from all corners through astronomy. This was my picture at Mount Wilson Observatory. And this is the 100-inch uh, telescope built uh, 100 years ago from now. It's very old. So I, I call my story from 100 millimeter to 100 inch. I built my 100 millimeter telescope and I got the chance to look through 100 inch telescope. That's my journey so far. And let's hope the 100 inch goes to much bigger <laughs> chances and opportunities. Um, I think I've pretty much uh, talked about um, the things we're doing and I, uh, I just hope uh, it was uh, something new for you guys and I will be available if there are questions at the end I will be happy to answer thank you so much for being here